And she was sponsored by the Nishmas and Memi Baruch Bas of Chaim Tzvi. We're discussing the comments of Hillel, who was one of the great uh, leaders of the Jewish people in the period uh, leading up to the destruction of the time of destruction of the second base Hamikdash. And Hillel uh, teaches a number of uh, important teachings. And the Mishnah we're up to says as follows: Who Hayom and Negid Shmo Avad Shmei, Udlo Mosiv Yosef, Udlo Yalef Katalachaya, Udishtamesh Besoga Cholof. Uh, this is an Aramaic teaching. It's one of the few teachings in Pirkei Ovis. It's in Aramaic. In general, the Mishnah is written in Hebrew. Hello, people spoke Aramaic, but the Mishnayis, as opposed to the Gemara, is written in Hebrew. Mishnayis are all in Hebrew, but occasionally we have Aramaic comments. Like here, Hillel is sometimes called Hillel HaBavli. He came to uh, to Eretz originally from Babel, maybe... Uh, that's why he spoke. Uh, he spoke Aramaic again. I stress people in Eretz Yisrael spoke Aramaic too. But it's a question of why he made this statement in Aramaic. But in any event, let's translate what he means. It says Avad somebody who spends his life trying to build up his name, so he'll end up losing his name. This is a, a very important lesson that we see very often in contemporary times. We find people whose whole life is built on achieving a name for themselves. It doesn't matter how they achieve it, but they want to achieve a name for themselves. They end up losing their name, or their name is associated with failure. Today there's a very popular uh, phenomenon known as reality TV. Reality shows that people uh, want to be on TV doing everyday things, and there are people who do all kinds of crazy things just for the purpose of having their name in lights, having uh, their few minutes of fame, or having their picture in the paper. And often ends up, if that's the whole pursuit, if a person uh, does uh, good deeds and does things which are noble and helpful and charitable and so on, then he gets credit for it. So this is something that we uh, allow. And I've quoted in the past the question was raised to the Rosh whether it's permissible for a person to, when he donates money to a shul to yeshiva, to put his name up and say this was donated by the so-and-so family in honor of this or memory of that and so on. And uh, the Rosh Boa says that this is permissible. One of the reasons it's permissible because it inspires other people to give. In other words, your goal is to give money to the yeshiva, to the hospital, to the shul, to whatever it is. And then you want to get the credit for it. We're allowed to take credit for our mitzvahs. In fact, the Rosh Boa proves it from episodes in the Chumash. The Torah describes that when the brothers of Yosef wanted to kill him, Ruvain came up with an idea that they should throw him into a pit. In his head, Ruvain's plan was later on, when they're not looking, I'll come get Yosef out, I'll return him to his father. He didn't say that to the brother. Read the passage, it looks like he said to his brother, let's throw him in this pit, because later on I want to take him out. No, he didn't say that, because they wouldn't have fallen for it. He said, let's throw him into this pit. And then in his mind, he was thinking, that later on I'll take him out and rescue him. So that was a noble deed on Ruben's part. His intentions were good. Of course, the plan didn't exactly work because they ended up taking Yosef out and selling him into slavery. But that was Ruben's intention. So the Gemara comments that had Ruben known at that time that what he was thinking, what he was planning to do was going to be written down in the Torah. It was going to be read and studied for posterity. Every year, Parshas Vayeshev, every Jew is going to read this story. We have one who studies Chumash is going to read the story of Ruben. Had Ruben known that, that Ruben understood the significance of the action at that point, that it's going to be something that's going to be remembered for all time, he wouldn't have just thought of an idea maybe I'll bring him back to his father the Gemara says he would have picked him up and carried him on his shoulders to his father because you know, people like to get credit right? he would have known that this was something going to be that was remembered for all time he would have uh, taken much more dramatic action than he did and the Gemara has other statements like that other people in Tanakh who got credit for something had they realized they are going to be credited they would have done even better so the Rashbo writes that's why we see from there that it's okay for a person to take credit for his good deeds but if your whole purpose is not to do good deeds. All you want is to see your name in lights, so then eventually your name will be forgotten, or will be associated with things you don't want it to be associated. That's the first teaching in this statement. And then uh, Hillel says, the Lomosif Yosef, uh, many assume that this refers to learning. If a person doesn't continue to learn, so he'll lose what he did learn. You know, we know today that uh, there's a problem with physical uh, therapy that people have sometimes that when they're sick in the hospital or something that they need uh, special training to learn how to use their muscles again because their muscles atrophy. Right? If you don't use something, so it becomes uh, hard to use the next time you want to use it. So people have been laid up for a long time, have to, God forbid, undergo certain therapy, just learn how to walk again, how to move the arms again and so on because their body isn't used to it. You have to build up the strength again. So a person doesn't exercise 
exercise anything, um, uh, so it's not good for the body. And if he doesn't exercise his mind, he's not learning. So not only won't he learn further, he'll forget what he learned before. That'll disappear. He'll lose what he had before. It's a very interesting uh, theory that uh, recently popular book in recent times. Uh, I think it's called the the changing human brain or something along those lines. Where this uh, I think a psychologist writes that one of the reasons that people when they get older have trouble remembering things and so on is because your brain doesn't work as hard. When you're a child, a student in school, think about it for a moment, student in school, studying math and science and history and English and he's reading stories and he's researching and his brain is constantly working in many, many different areas. And a student in yeshiva, on top of all that, you know, and more prominent than all that, he's involved in learning Gemara and learning Chumash and his brain is constantly working. Then as you get older, your brain, and, and, and I stress, working on different things, different disciplines, different parts of the brain at work to master so many different things at once. But as you get older, and it's true of all of us, so we focus our brain on one area, namely the area that we're interested in, and uh, the brain never sharpens, you never learn if you're not involved in mathematics, so you don't study any math beyond high school. You're not, you're not involved in uh, literature, perhaps you don't read too much, other